Hey, this is Ryan Jones from Serverless Guru. I wanted to make a video real quick about one of the templates that we made a while back for a client. And what this template covers is something called Webpack. So this is Serverless Webpack. What's interesting about this pattern is that it allows you to package your Lambda functions in uh, less megabytes, which is going to help with cold starts, uh, latency, and increased performance on your final deployed Lambda function. And so what we're using for this is we're using the serverless framework, and I just want to give you an overview about how this actually works so you can implement it on your projects. So inside of this repository, something that you can see at the very high level is we have a couple breakdowns here on folder structure. The reason why we have this is that Webpack can be somewhat of a complicated subject in the fact that you can do it in multiple different ways. The first way that you can do it is just straight up I want to include all of my JavaScript files and I want to exclude everything else. And so what will happen is that the Webpack plugin will then create a dependency tree and then it will then go through and only pull in the files which are actually being used by your Lambda function. What we've seen in practice is that this can reduce your Lambda package size by 80 to 90 percent. And that's a huge difference because that can take it from 50 megabytes down to less than 5 megabytes. And so what we have here is we have a couple different examples of one pulling in just the JavaScript files, which is our base uh, baseline use case. And then we have another use case, which would be number two, which allows us to uh, pull in other files that we need as well. Sometimes we want to pull in files that may not be a JavaScript file, but it may be helpful to our Lambda function, in which case we need to pull that file in when it's actually being packaged so that the final Lambda function actually has all the files that it normally needs. When you're not using the Webpack plugin, this usually happens automatically. And so it's the first common gotcha that takes place when somebody starts implementing Webpack for their Node.js Lambda functions, is that they forget to have uh, what's called the copy plugin included, and they end up seeing issues where their final deployed package, yes, it's small, yes, the cold starts aren't going to happen as frequently, but it doesn't have all the files, and so the code breaks. And of course, we don't want that. And so I'm going to show you how we can go about uh, implementing it. So if we move down here, the first thing that you can see is that we're installing serverless Webpack, the Webpack plugin, and also the copy Webpack plugin. In this example, we are pulling in the copy Webpack plugin, but of course, if you don't need extra files outside the JavaScript files, you don't need to have this in there. And then we're going to update our serverless.yaml file in the plugin section. Uh, you can see here there's a plugin section, our serverless.yaml. If you're using the serverless framework, this is what this is about. If you're not using the serverless framework, there may be equivalent ways that you can achieve it with AWS SAM or Terraform, uh, potentially, but you're going to have to find an alternative solution to that. Uh, this is strictly about serverless framework. So the first one here, we can see that we're listing the serverless webpack. Uh, this is the dependency that we also installed in the last command. And you can see something here called package individually true. So what this does, package individually true, is it basically says if we're defining five Lambda functions inside of one serverless.yaml file, it's going to package each one of those Lambda functions into a separate zip file. And each one of those zip files are going to use Webpack to then build that dependency tree and only pull in the files that it needs. And so what that looks like is each individual uh, zip file is one Lambda function, and they're all optimized to the exact dependencies that they need, meaning that the, the sizes are going to all decrease by 80 to 90% potentially. Moving down here, we can see the create webpack.config.js file. This webpack.config.js file is a key ingredient to using the Webpack plugin. When you look down here, you can see this is the simple file here. You can copy this exactly as it is right here and copy it into your local environment. Install the serverless Webpack uh, plugin and Webpack, and then add the plugin here, and then add package individually true. And you'll be able to actually start seeing 80% package reductions uh, as, a, as a potential outcome. If you need to package other files, as we mentioned before, that is where the copy Webpack plugin comes in. And down here you can see that we've increased the number of lines inside of our webpack.config.js file. And now we have a line here for adding the copy Webpack plugin. And then we have the same module.exports here as above, except we now have a section here called plugins. And in here we're using the copy plugin. For our specific use case, we're giving it a pattern saying go to the lib slash templates and then use a glob pattern. A glob pattern is two asterisks back to back, which basically says grab the entire entirety of that folder. 
So underneath the templates folder, we have other files. We want to include those in our final package. And so by giving a star star here, we say go to that folder directory and grab all of it, even the folders that are underneath templates, not just the files. Little bit of extra intro here about what I just talked about. And then if you want to actually run this without making a deployment to the AWS account, what you can do is you can run SLS package. What SLS package is going to do is it's going to run the same command that would be run if you ran SLS deploy or serverless deploy. And it is going to package up that Lambda function or your five Lambda functions. It's going to start building that dependency tree, pulling in only the files that it needs and then creating a zip file out of that or multiple zip files. Then you can look locally underneath the dot serverless folder. Inside of that dot serverless folder, you're going to see the zip files listed there as well as some JSON that's been created by the serverless framework. And those zip files, you can then open those up and you can actually inspect to see what was actually included. If you need to do the copy webpack plugin, this is a great way for you to test that locally without deploying to the Lambda environment which is going to save you development cycles. Continuing to move down, additional optimizations. Uh, you can see the add package individually true that we have here. We've actually included that above, and I mentioned that just a second ago. And then finally, there is a warning here. If you are using the include exclude pattern with serverless framework, you will hit issues with the Webpack plugin. Strictly because the Webpack plugin is now going to act as the de facto dependency tree shaking uh, plugin tool that, that we're using locally for our development environment. And so when we mix and match include and exclude together, the Webpack plugin will take priority over this, in which case if you say include or exclude everything and include only my one handler file, that's actually not going to be uh, the right thing to do with the Webpack plugin. Instead, what we want to do is we want to rely on the Webpack plugin to find the files that need to be included and then grab those. And as we said, it's not going to grab YAML files, it's not going to grab uh, JPEGs or any other files that are local, binary files, for instance. If you want to include those binary files or those asset files like images or JSON files, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to use the copy webpack plugin up here and you'll want to define the paths. And you can see here that each path is actually a string and you can have an array of strings that are path values. So that's the high level overview of using serverless webpack with the serverless framework and Lambda functions. If you found this useful, please drop us a like on the video so that we know to keep making content like this for the community. Uh, this was Ryan Jones from Serverless Guru. I appreciate you watching and have a good rest of your day.